Transparency is key for managing any kind of infrastructure. Really understanding your network and what's in it is important for preventing security risks, hidden costs, shadow IT, and so much more. And this is not just for your on-premises infrastructure, but also your cloud infrastructure. But how do you obtain this transparency? In this episode, Julian Kienberger from Kubelon joins us to explain what infrastructure transparency is, and he gives five tips for getting that transparency. Here's Julian. Welcome to the monitoringexperts.com. Go to the monitoringexperts.com to see past episodes. And also, if you want to give us feedback, the monitoringexperts.com forward slash feedback. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about infrastructure transparency. And I think this is something that a lot of uh, IT admins, IT professionals, and anyone who's dealing with infrastructure may not actually know that they want. Um, you may have transparency for part of your infrastructure, but actually what we're talking about is a holistic overview and a, a clear transparency of your infrastructure. And to talk about this, we have Julian uh, from Kubelon. Welcome to the welcome to the podcast. Hi, Sean. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah. Glad to be here. And actually, actually, we we invited ourselves to come to your offices. <laughs> yeah, to be honest, we're sitting in the Cubelon <laughs> offices here. So let's let's first start with you. Can you just give us a brief introduction to you? Yeah, my name is uh, Julian Kienberger. I'm one of the four founders of uh, Cubelon. We founded Cubelon back in 2019. And uh, w maybe just give us an in uh, overview of what Cubelon does. Yeah. So our central um, mission is to um, automate the manual, still manual process of capturing and analyzing um, hybrid IT landscapes, meaning that uh, IT landscapes have a cloud part and have an on-premises part. And we want to bring that together and automate the IT documentation, which is very tedious to do if you do yeah. it manually, if people have to do it because yes. it's not much fun. So we uh, automate this, and this has many benefits if you do it right. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're going to talk about. We're talking about doing it right, and because because this is what Kubelon does, this is what you you're involved with. Um, you you you're a good person to give us some insights in how into how to get uh, this transparency. Because, like you said, it's the the, the case of full cloud environments or hybrid environments where you've got part of your infrastructure on premises, part of it in cloud. It's very difficult to have that overview. And like you said, documentation. I think when you say that word, a lot of admins and IT people out there cringe or shudder wherever they're listening to this podcast. It's not a happy, uh, happy thought for them, I guess. Yeah, documentation always sounds a little bit, well, lazy, tedious. Yes. Nobody wants it, and but it is. No, everybody needs it. So um, yes. you can get around it. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> you have to do it. So um, with that in mind, let's let's get into, uh, first of all, I think would be a good place to start is to, to talk about what do you mean when you say infrastructure or transparency of infrastructure exactly? Yeah, uh, transparency is a word that you hear very often, but what we mean is uh, you have transparency if you know all about your IT assets. So you know every asset and you know the dependencies between your IT assets. Mm -hmm. Because only then you can use your knowledge to make um, profound, solid IT decisions. So um, transparency is somehow the basis for um, transforming and optimizing your IT landscape. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, it has an impact on things like security and costs and, and all these sort of knock-on effects of, of what yeah. could happen. If you have sh shadow IT or if you have places where you could be th have threats with you, you because you don't see it or you don't know about it. It's, yeah, it's exactly. Important. If you um, don't know where your costs come from, then uh, well, how to find it? You need to uh, see all your IT assets. You need to um, search for the, the unnecessary uh, cost drivers. Mm. And uh, if there is a big part of it um, hidden or shadow IT, then you will never find it. Yeah. And it's the same for security. If there are some security vulnerabilities uh, you don't even know about, then, uh, well, it's just a matter of time until someone um, uses this against you. Yeah. So there are many uh, well, um, incidents. Yeah. You can read about it in the news and uh, you don't want to be the next one appearing in the news. So. Yeah. And of course, transparency also has to do with making strategic decisions as well. The, the more that you know about your infrastructure, the better decisions you can make f about your strategy moving forward, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, IT landscapes tend to grow. They tend to 
become more and more complex, more and more dynamic. And so many companies, uh, mid-sized companies and large scale companies decide to uh, move a big part of the IT into the cloud because the scalability is better there. Mm. And if you move uh, something in the cloud, it gets more complicated, more people can access it. It's available, well, in principle to the whole world. And so you need to take um, additional measures to protect it. Okay. And knowing about all your IT assets at every point in time is, uh, well, the basis for all this. Yeah, sounds like a, a like a sort of a utopian view. Um, but I think I think it's to a large degree, it's possible. But if we're talking about it, and it's sounding pretty vague, how can we make it more concrete? And you've brought with five tips for how how you believe people can achieve better transparency. So let's start off with the first tip. And not necessarily is it the most important? The first one? I think it's the most important one, because okay. uh, many and people will, can relate to it. Because uh, in many cases, the situation is that there are many pieces of information uh, is lying around in your in your company, mm -hmm. but you cannot connect it. So there are different data sources like Excel tables or um, knowledge in the head of some people, or it's in one of your IT management tools, but nobody brings it together. And this is the first and uh, well most important thing. Bring the pieces together to merge them into one knowledge base. Okay. So bring all together from technical information up to even strategic information, as you mentioned, like departments, people, responsibilities, all this can uh, go into one, what we call IT map. And this IT map should be comprehensive, up to date and um, preferably consistent. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so you would have a number of data sources that you mentioned there. How do you, how does... I mean, maybe this is a too big a question for a 30-minute podcast, but how would you decide? You need to decide on the reliability of these sources as well. Yeah, exactly. Uh, if you're using a monitoring tool like PRTG, you can rely on the information because information is uh, captured, um, well, in many cases, live. Yeah. And so it's pretty reliable because it was just uh, pulled from the system. But if you rely on your Excel table that um, someone created um, years ago and nobody feels obliged to keep up to date, then it's pretty dangerous. Mm. So uh, if you bring together information and um, information tells you contradicting things about one IT asset, for example, a database or a server, then you can decide which uh, source to trust. And if you, for example, decide for a PRTG, then uh, you have already some kind of merging strategy yeah so you know this kind of data i can get from here this kind of what are the what about the data that's in people's heads you mentioned that earlier <laughs> like how would you get that out of their heads into a data source well it depends on it, is it somewhere available in some digital form so if there is an excel table you can import it so that's not a big deal if nobody has ever written it down um, you can add this information uh, to your IT map. You do it once and then it will be uh, available there. Yeah. In most cases, um, most companies do have a lot of data sources and their main problem is to bring this together. And then you can add some information which is only in the heads of the people, which uh, and at some point in the future will go um, into retirement and then the information is yeah. lost. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's, uh, doesn't, uh, there's no other, other solution than uh, adding some information in a manual way, but only once, and then you can use it. Mm -hmm. And this bringing the data into a central hub, that, that hub is going to be some kind of tool uh, where, where you can put everything into. Yeah. yeah, you need a platform that can well incorporate information from, technical, from a technical level like uh, PRTG, also from IT management tools like WeSphere mm. or uh, Kubernetes, and uh, there are many tools uh, which um, companies tend to use, like uh, ServiceNow, which is a database for, well, uh, almost everything. Mm -hmm. But uh, they don't have their crucial information in one place, so they want to bring it together. Mm -hmm. And um, you need a platform for this. And this platform should feature some ability to um, define rules that um, merge the data for you because you don't want to do it in a manual way. You just define the rules and then the information uh, keeps coming in and uh, the tool applies your rules uh, that one consistent IT map is uh, is uh, kept. Right. This is the, the main part. Yeah. And speaking of not doing it manually, I guess that leads us on to your next tip that you have for us. Yeah, it's all about automation, uh, automation of data collection. 
um, because the manual way um, has uh, many problems. If people do it, they are not always um, motivated to do it. They do it in a different level of detail um, and they cannot be as fast as a program. So you're always um, behind the up-to-dateness, let's say, of your data. So if someone uh, um, updates the data once a week, it may not be enough for you to see all your servers or your databases or the problems occurring. If, for example, one server is uh, over overloaded or has a high workload, um, you have no live view for that if people update the information. And uh, there are so many problems in doing it manually, and that's not really an option because nowadays um, IT landscapes are very dynamic. They keep changing in a fast way. So um, especially in the cloud, there are departments which has, have own cloud um, rights in your company and they can uh, create new resources, new IT assets and delete them as well. And you don't even know about it. Yeah. So you have to, you need some, some support to keep it consistent because, um, well, it's not a option anymore for for people it's unmanageable it has become unmanageable for people yeah and your it staff has better things to do than uh keeping your documentation up to date <laughs> yes always comes back down to this documentation story yeah so maybe you can give some uh, examples of uh automate automation of data collection to make it a bit clearer yeah uh, for example if you have um ptg as a data source uh, you have uh, Darktrace, which is a security AI solution that many companies um, deploy. And then you can use the information from both um, to make a complete model of your technical IT assets, um, of the communication between these assets, mm. which lead to dependencies that you didn't know about. And for example, you can see where is um, unencrypted communication taking place, which is in most cases not desired. Um, so you can easily build up just from two data sources, even from two data sources, um, um, well, IT map that shows you all the components, all the technical stuff, mm. and uh, all the dependencies between it. And there are a lot of dependencies which people don't know about. And um, these two tools uh, alone are very, well, beneficial. But okay. it, even if you only have uh, PRTG, then uh, um, there are ways to, um, well, show you even more views, even more insights, give you more insights on uh, how the dependencies are. Mm -hmm. But the more data sources, the better. And if you have data sources on another level, for example, enterprise manage architecture management tools um, do provide a strategic view on your uh, IT landscape. And these help to bring together all these levels of, of um, abstraction because maybe someone uh, which, who is not a tech guy for example, an uh, IT lead or a, C a CTO, they also want to know about your IT landscape, but they want to see it on a different level. They're not interested in every server, every database, but maybe in the software and the products that build on this, uh, on these resources. Mm -hmm. Automation of data collection is really the foundation of uh, getting the stuff together. What, what then? What is, what, is, what is the next step from there? Yeah, the important thing is that you have to... Um, bring it together and to connect it. Mm. So it's not about um, writing everything in one database, but to connect the IT assets. For example, um, information for specific servers, virtual machines, databases, they come from different sources. And in many cases, um, they will um, tell you something about um, the same data sources. So yeah. server X, Y, there is information coming from different data sources and you need to bring it together. So everything needs to be stored in one IT asset, one node, and um, this information has to be um, consistent. Yeah. So if the IP address um, is not the same, if it uh, is different, then you have to decide which data source to trust, like you mentioned before. And so all the data can be collected in, in one place so that you don't see 20 servers X, Y, but only one. Yeah. And um, the information uh, should be up to date if you define um, a good interval to pull the data. Mm -hmm. So what depends on you, maybe you want to see it in a, in a minute like manner, but maybe um, an hour is update interval is enough for you because you know that uh, your IT landscape um, doesn't change in seconds, but maybe in hours. Yeah. 
Okay, so what what you're suggesting is uh, kind of creating a map of of these entities or nodes, as you call them. Yeah, yeah, and uh, this map uh, helps you to well orientate yourself. Yeah. In in the jungle, and it's the basis for well, if it's a very large map, it can get very complex and complicated, but it's the basis and. Using this, you can uh, search for the information that you are looking for in your use case. Mm -hmm. But you need this map that is interconnected. Okay. And what 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 is what makes a good IT map? It uh, makes it a good IT map if nothing is missing. Mm -hmm. So um, if there are, is a shadow IT part, then it's not a complete, not a comprehensive map, and you should think about bringing in more data sources. Mm -hmm. um, but if you have uh, all your vital data sources contributing to it, then you can be sure that um, this map represents your whole IT landscape, all your assets that you want to protect and that you are using. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you have this map, then you can use it for, for example, um, um, optimizing the efficiency of your IT landscape or improving the security and so on. So, yeah. um, But the map is the basis and it has to be consistent. Um, it's just a one-time thing to define rules to bring this map together to consolidate it. But if you have defined that, um, you can continue using it, and um, then the well, the main work part is done for you. Then you can enjoy your use cases. Mm -hmm. But there's always some work to be done for setting this up. But it's not it's not um, so much work as people might think. Yeah. Although there, there, I think there is a fair amount of complexity in it, like you were saying, if you have a server X, Y, Z, or whatever you said it was, and then you have two data sources about that, you have to decide, are they redundant? Or is one data source giving me information about the operations of it, and the other one's giving me some other information about it that are both useful for that entity? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a lot of a lot of decisions and, and uh, research that, that needs to be done. Yeah, the more info on assets, the better. And... Um, you can use all this information for, for good. So um, you just have to decide which data source is more trustworthy mm -hmm. and uh, how often should this be updated. Okay. And, and then you're, you're fine. You're okay. good to go. All right. So that's three tips that, that we've gotten so far. And, and we'll, we'll summarize the, the tips at the end just, just, to, just to kind of wrap it up. But for now, what, what, what is the next tip? Um, well, as I mentioned, uh, such an IT landscape, such an IT map can get very complex, very large. There are many dependencies. And now you want to make use of all this information. Mm -hmm. And how do you do this? Um, you can create visualizations that show you the complexity in a pyramid-like manner. For example, if you have um, um, cloud computing resources and um, computing resources in your basement. You have a software, you have products and databases. You want to see them in, well, a tree mm. to um, give you an overview of what depends on which asset. And such visualizations are very um, useful for people analyzing their IT landscape. So you should have the ability, to, the functionality to um, extract such views for you. You want, don't want to see it all. You want to see certain assets mm -hmm. and you want to see them in a certain manner. So for example, if you're just interested in your currently running servers um, that have uh, Windows 8 as an operating system, you could create such a view mm -hmm. and then you would only see the things that are interested that are interesting for you especially. So and this is uh, very important, this filtering, constraining um, views so that you can get one view that um, you can use to analyze your IT landscape. Yeah. For example, highlighting every outdated software running on your virtual machines or um, highlighting unencrypted communication taking place in your IT landscape. So it reduces 10,000s of dependencies to just, let's say, 30. And then you can take a look at it as an IT admin and say, okay, that is undesired behavior. Yeah. Um, let's try to fix it. Okay. Uh, one, one thing, um, we saw many IT landscapes out there and even mid-sized companies have large IT landscapes with hundred thousands of elements. Yeah. So uh, first um, mechanism is to really find the ones that you're interested in. If you know that your server just failed, then you want to find your server in this yeah. uh, in this maze, and uh, 
here we uh, can also um, well solve this problem with filtering, with searching, with reducing the the, the view yeah. to just the crucial part. Yeah, so it's making the data useful essentially is is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And people can al only understand well some uh, to some extent the the complexity of an IT landscape. So you need to reduce the view. You need um, charts. You need tables. You need what we call a graph view with IT assets as nodes mm. and the communication, the dependencies as well, straight lines as edges. And this helps you a lot in understanding what is going on and what can I do about it. And you can always check um, if your um, compliance rules are met by your IT guys and your, your stuff. Yeah. yeah, that's also a big thing that I think is, is going to affect more and more companies as well with standards and things being put in place and requirements. Yeah. Yeah. So the last tip, what do you what do you have for us, Julian? So it's um, it's the it's a thing to uh, uh, know about the real use cases that can be addressed with such an IT map. So if you just know about all your uh, IT assets, there is no use case yet. Yeah. yeah. But uh, you have to think about it and. Uh, one basic use case is, of course, the documentation, as we mentioned before. So you want to build one large database, which has to be accurate, which has to be complete. And uh, this is a basic use case um, that we already addressed. And it includes that you know about um, hitherto unknown dependencies. Mm -hmm. So these dependencies do show you possible threats to the re reliability, the robustness of your IT landscape and finding out about them is a big step in the uh, direction of, um, well, solidifying the, the IT landscape. Mm. And this is uh, one thing that um, people want to know because um, if you, for example, uh, know that you will be updating a server in a week um, because it needs uh, new software, uh, then you want to know in advance which other IT assets are affected by this? Right. Is there any database relying on this server? Is there another service or a product? Um, and which people are affected? Mm. Who is responsible? And you want to know that in advance because just pulling the plug isn't a good strategy. So um, this is a very important use case, the unknown dependencies. Yeah, okay. And... Um, what about other problems that 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 might that people might face with with this kind of creating net, uh, infrastructure transparency? Yeah, um, there are many companies that um, are not sure whether their um, compliance rules, their desired IT patterns, are uh, are fulfilled. Um, for example. Um, in many cases, you want to separate your test environment, your test services from your real production services. Mm -hmm. And uh, this sounds pretty easy, but uh, in reality, um, it's often the case that there are unknown dependencies between these two worlds. And these dependencies are, um, well, should be avoided. Mm -hmm. And finding them is easy if you have an IT map. Then you can just define some rules, um, highlight those that are production services, highlight those that are test services, and uh, just l taking a look at dependencies that shouldn't be there. So mm. um, this is quite helpful um, to show people that their IT landscape looks different from the picture that they have in their head. Maybe a picture arising from an Excel table that was uh, created years ago. And um, that's very important to show the, the stuff that the IT landscape might look different than mm -hmm. they think, Yeah, especially for such uh, problems. And one main aspect is also um, you're paying a lot for especially cloud assets and um, you don't always know where the costs are really incurred. Yeah. So you just know the, the grand total, something like that, but um, you don't know if you can um, reduce your costs, if there is a cost driver that you don't need, if there is any server that you pay for and which is, isn't used at all. And um, taking a deeper look at especially cloud assets um, is very useful because the cloud providers 
aren't that interested in showing you how to save money. Was they not? <laughs> yeah, that's their business model. Um, there are means, they are providing mechanisms to, well, gain insights in your cost structure. But there could be more and you yeah. can achieve a lot more if you um, bring together your, your data in your own IT map because you can trust this and you can decide on yourself whether to um, pull the plug on some assets or not. Yeah, and I mean the picture that the the cloud providers provide is only limited to the cloud so you wouldn't know if there's a dependency in your on-premises environment exactly. that relies on something that's in the cloud as well so that's that's why you need that complete overview of your whole infrastructure. Yeah, this uh, hybrid IT um, aspect is very, very important because almost every company has a split model. Mm. No one is, no one has all its IT assets um, on premises, and almost nobody has a, a complete cloud landscape. So it's always a mixture. It's a transformation process taking place, a migration taking place. So you have to address um, both worlds um, in parallel. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is can be can be complex, but it's important, very important yeah. to uh, for of keeping up able to supporting your business model because you cannot transfer all the, your your on prem assets in the cloud in one day. Yeah. So these are projects that take years, uh, sometimes uh, more than ten years uh, for for a huge company. So, um, but it's a big challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think those bigger, bigger companies are even in more need of, I mean, it's good for everyone to have this kind of transparency, but even the bigger and more complex the, the infrastructure, the more important it is to have this kind of transparency. Yeah, because um, large companies um, have departments and these departments do often have their own IT landscape. And so even the departments are very different within one company. Yeah. So uh, bringing this together is very complex because um, there are societies um, among societies in these uh, in these companies, and um, while this is g grown in some organic way, we call it organically grown IT landscape mm. because it developed over a decades, and uh, you need to well address this issue and to bring it all together yeah. to harmonize it, because um, five different IT landscapes in one company tend to be very inefficient. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So. Sh shall we shall we just do a quick summary of the the five tips that that that, that I got? So uh, first of all, what you were saying is first of all you need to bring all the data into one place. Uh, then it's the automation of that data collection, and then uh, from that you need to create a comprehensive map. We spoke a bit a bit about the mapping of that stuff, making the data useful through filtering and through asking questions that or finding the questions that you need answers to. And then identifying things like the most problematic things that you need to face, like the dependencies between between different uh, entities. Yeah, knowing about what you want to really solve, what is your goal? Mm -hmm. Because if you're happy with your IT landscape and um, the costs are not a factor for you, yeah. which doesn't apply to anyone, but <laughs> um, then you won't need such a such a thing. But um, you have always. A, big motivation to improve your IT landscape okay. because it's it's changing anyway, so you don't have a choice. Yeah. Thank you very much for sharing these insights. Uh, I wouldn't say if, the, if listeners uh, are listening, <laughs> then they should, and they have questions, then uh, direct it to themonitoringexperts.com forward slash feedback, or uh, they could also go on the Kubelon website, kubelon.io, if I'm remembering correctly. Or yeah, yeah. yeah. That's it, kubelon.io. Thank you so much for being on the podcast today. Thank you for inviting me. It was and, a pleasure. And, and we're, I, I think we're going to get you back, by the way, just so you know. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, mm, I don't remember signing up for more podcasts. But yeah, anyway, thank you very much. Thanks.